it may be an astronomic investment, but becoming the company that sponsors the first lunar settlement to be made capital of the most seductive satellite in the galaxy is well worth the risk. We are looking for people with the right stuff, with the guts to live in a city that is certain to become the most powerful on the moon. But first, you will have to help build it. We are in the year 1977 and the future promised by science fiction is already here. More information and enrollment forms inside. Make sure you get the best concessions and the juiciest projects. Design your settlement carefully so that your sponsor company gets ahead in the construction of Luna Capital. So, here we go with Luna Capital. So right inside the box, um, right on top, it looks like it has nice instructions on how to assemble some of the different components that go with the game, uh, be it the little towers and card holders and such. I'll be interested to see after those are made if they fit in the box as is or if we have to disassemble every game. Okay, that appears we have uh, multiple rule books um, for different languages which is nice that they don't have to fully print. Uh, it looks like the components are probably going to be language uh, independent, and then you just need to find the rule book that met, matches the language uh, that suits you best. Um, it looks appear to be five different ones, which is really cool to see how they've done that to make it more friendly for a lot of different gamers. And so that goes along the line of what we're doing here to be inclusive and kind of broaden uh, the gaming sphere sphere of who's who's all can play the games with us because we're not isolated here uh, playing games in just English in the U.S. It is gaming all over the world in all different languages and everything we can do to be inclusive and inviting and welcoming of all the different cultures and languages is part of what we should be doing. And so I applaud that they have done this straight up and already uh, brought in so many different languages and made sure there's a full rule book. And it's it's not like, oh, this half of the book is this, and then you have to flip through it to find your language. It is. It's a full rule book in, the, in, your, in that language. So I'm going to find the English one, set the others aside. Let's do a quick glance on it. So it kind of gives you some backstory and then a generalization of the game. Uh, so it kind of tells you in general what the players are doing. It says it's going to be over 12 rounds. So that immediately says, okay, there's a time limit on this game. And uh, so if you basically just read this first, read it to new players, you have a really good understanding of what your goal is and how long you have to achieve it. So right in, this, in front of this uh, has a nice setup showing off uh, the symbol ta uh, tower stuff, uh, stacking the tiles, uh, what it might look like for each player, and it's angled the different cards. We're going to wait a moment here. I do apologize. Some loud noise going outside my door. I don't want to interrupt uh, what we're talking about, and I can cut this out once I upload it. But we can have fun with it. It's neighbors. We can't discredit having good neighbors. Um, typically, I can't complain about the neighbors. Of course, when you have kids, they're going to be loud occasionally around you. So, I think it's quiet now. We can continue. All right. So, in this rule book, first page, it goes over the setup. I do like how they, they very intentionally made this 3D in the angle that you're seeing everything. So, like, for example, you're sitting like you're sitting at the seat right here, seeing your own cards, but then these other players' cards, you can see the back of. So they very intentionally made it look like, hey, it's a player's perspective at the table, which you don't see very often in the game. Most game rule rules uh, just do kind of a top-down view, very flat. Um, so they've taken the extra thought to make it this way, which I think is really cool. Uh, then it kind of talks you through the setup, which is helpful. Uh, and then it talks about game components right here. 
So that is a little bit different in that you're used to seeing game components first and then set up. But most likely what I'm assuming is because of uh, number of pages and the layout of that setup is to best fit the number of page printing for pricing and stuff like that. They did this. But it's also pretty straightforward because they're during the setup process, there's really good labels and showing, so it shouldn't be that hard to differentiate the component, components as you do it. So we'll see how that goes once I go to play this. That is an interesting thing that they've done with the setup, though, uh, of the rule book itself. And then it talks about, uh, kind of goes into what the game is, uh, kind of going over different types of tiles and scoring and how they work but with very good examples and very clear cut sections in here easy to read uh, both in color and font size with pretty clear examples like right here it's showing a tile above the board and then like an arrow going down like it's being placed so it's it's nice to see okay this is the component being talked about being placed here and then kind of almost an uh FAQ style uh, important note about the rule, kind of very clear cut, showing it up uh, in a different color. So, so as I read through this, it's very easy to spot things and verify things. It goes through gameplay, uh, talks about a turn, how that works. And it appears the main turn or a player's turn to end of round fits in these two pages right here. Uh, just a, at a quick glance so as soon as you learn what the cards mean or the symbols mean you can kind of keep this page open as you're learning the game not flipping back and forth between too many pages so that that's very nice to see uh, and then it goes the, the end of the phase concessions uh, final scoring uh, going over the different types and how you use the, uh, the scoring pad and then it goes into detailed information very clear-cut laid out what each tile means with its picture uh, and then little diagrams next to each one, which is very helpful uh, for both experienced and new players. Um, so there's no confusion on how this works. So I do appreciate that as well. And it goes over a solitaire mode, um, which will be nice for me because I enjoy a good solitaire game. Um, which is interesting because I think the box said two to four players, but... It may be that the solitaire mode is slightly different, so they don't want to make you to make that assumption that it's going to feel exactly the same as a multiplayer game, which I do like that that they don't uh, act like it's all the same. So they they give you the solitaire option, but they do act and put information like it's primarily a two to four player game. Uh, then talking about scoring, the uh, Ottoman uh, Ottoma style. And then kind of some icon reference on the back of this as well. And then credits here on, on the bottom. Okay, so looking at the address base for the company, it does say it's Barcelona. Okay, so we have a score pad. Uh, a decent number of sheets, not the biggest, not the smallest. Uh, very... It's kind of a small score pad um, in size, uh, uh, but it looks like it's enough room to at least write the numbers. And then fairly clear iconography. So, uh, and then scoring and like, and it looks like the scoring happens in almost an exponential number, uh, amount uh, based on how many of certain symbols you have. So they quick really reference that on the score pad as well. See if I can get a close up of that here for y'all. So of course you have all these icons and then that scoring reference based on how many. I'm not sure if it's gonna focus for y'all, but we'll try. So as you can see, it's not very big, but again, I don't think you need a huge rule book for this game based on what I've seen so far. Okay, so we got some uh, Ziploc baggies already right up front. Okay, and then we've got promo tiles right here on top. Uh, this is um, when I 
picked up at the con instead of coming with the promo, so I can't guarantee every copy that is not sold at the con will come with the promo. But it looks like it's additional tiles. And then what's cool is one of those tiles actually has a QR code on the back that says rules, so I believe you could scan it, go either see a website with rules or a video of some sort. So it'd be interesting to see if that leads you to the, all the different languages, kind of like the different language books it came with. Um, so, try to show off some of that art real quick right here. And that is a, uh, a punch board promo. There it looks to be five different pieces in that. Okay, so we have a couple baggies of components. First off, we have this wooden screen printed block. Um, pretty nice size, uh, easy to see at the table, no matter who's using it or where it's being used. Uh, just screen printed on one side. But it looks like nice, decent quality. That came in a Ziploc with one of the silica gel packs, help protect it. Put it back in it for now until I actually get to play. We're gonna have some of these. Um, how many of these? Four, five, six, seven, eight of these pieces. So let's see what these look like. So these are yellow. I can't tell if they're buildings or some kind of weird vehicle or what this represents because I haven't looked it up yet. But again, only screen printed on one side. Um, wood component. Okay. Next up, I assume these are going to be the player pieces because I'm saying it appears to be like at least four different types. Three of each, yep. So we'll move this stuff and get these out into view. So we have our uh, pink checkered spot Space shuttles, three of them. So get a closer view of it real quick right there. So I do like how these are different colors and shapes. Uh, v definitely very mindful of those with um, vision issues. So next up are these yellow vehicles of some sort. Uh, again, there's gonna be three of these. Uh, these are only, all of these appears to only be screen printed on one side. Next up we have uh, these uh, moons, crescent moons. Now these are not screen printed at all on these, um, but it has a nice shape to it. These are all wooden as well. And then last but not least, uh, three of these, uh, I guess kind of a space vehicles, uh, UFO style shape. And there's three of them. So I believe those are the players um, pieces that they use in some way. Because there's, uh, if I remember correctly, based on what they described the game for me, um, there's our end of round goals you can achieve. And as soon as you, uh, when you achieve one, you get to place one of your markers on it to indicate you've achieved that goal. Okay, next in the box we have um, some decks of cards. Now, these cards are used almost like um, tiles in other games we've played, in that uh, they end up being drafted, but you create a end up creating a grid system out of these cards. And each card has a spot on it to allow for building on. Uh, some are open, some appear to have certain requirements. Um, each number at the top are potentially points. I'd have to verify. But as you can see, the different types of things on them uh, different locations on them. There's something different right there. There's a, another different one. So 
from what I was um, told about the game, you're basically drafting these cards, you're drafting buildings along with them, which I'll be punching out in a moment. And so, and then kind of finding ways to fit the building tile tokens onto these cards in various ways to build up your, your city on the moon that you've been making. At the back of these, I'll have certain symbols uh, so far all the same. So let's see what's in this pack. Again, quick release, which I'm grateful for. Love that more companies have been doing that. So let's see how many of these are going to be that. Okay, so we have some different ones. Some more, and they have some bigger spaces, different size spaces. So I don't know if there's different tiles to draft or these are like there's spaces you can't fill. But those are all that blue back. Then we had some green and red back. So let's see what the red, greens are. So these are the in it, like the I believe end of round goals uh, based on like layout shapes or either having certain or not having certain types of building tiles and then scoring for them. So like this shows like, oh, you need this building, at these locations on cards laid out like this. Then you want like this building with cards around it or something. And, and kind of like we showed in the rule book, it goes into further explain what those mean. These red ones are potential other scoring things. Uh, I wonder if they're being read, if they're potentially secret objectives. Again, I'd have to look up and verify the rules on that. But a nice uh, assortment of cards, decent quality, not super thick. Decent enough. Um, we'll see how if they deform at all when we shuffle to play with them. Okay, so now we're getting into punch boards. Oh, nice. Uh, so I don't forget to talk about this. Looking at the the box art itself inside. So at first glance, from far away, it looks like okay, a general kind of the surface of the moon. But in very faint outline, it actually shows different shapes and components. So, like, oh, I can fit a tower or whatever here. I can fit certain tiles here. So it looks like it tells you how to set everything back into the box as well, which is really cool how they've done that. So let's get into the punch board. Well, before I do that, we have a, an actual game board. So we have this one. It does appear to be double-sided. It may be player count based. Yeah, because I think in the rule book this was the auto, the Ottoman, Ottoman uh, symbol. So this may be solo side, and then multiplayer side, right here. But essentially, uh, during the game, cards will be here going across. There'll be tiles down here, of different, different, varying amount depending on rounds and such. And then you're drafting from certain sections. And what I was told that this block piece uh, basically moves across as things are, are around as things are selected. So I believe it made it so like the newest thing that comes out is more expensive. So it encourages a cycling of pieces during the game. Let's set that aside. So we can get to the punch now. Okay, so there's a nice hefty stack. And that, and then the single one. I'll start with the single one. And these are in one of those uh, plastic resealable envelope style pieces, which isn't necessary, but kind of nice. It's punched out so it doesn't get too many things stuck in it, but I probably won't be keeping that. So this appears to be okay. So let's see how this punches. So a little tight on the punch, not the, there's a little bit of snap to it, but it's not super crisp. Let's see what we can hear on it. 
So to get that, I had to put a little bit extra pressure to fully snap out. So it's, the tabs on it are a little thick. I'm wanting to catch pretty easily. Uh, that building did snap a bit easier. Let's see how this tower thing snaps. Okay, that, that wasn't too bad. That came out, and if I saw correctly, this will go in as a standing piece, possibly as a first player token or something. Snap these out. I think these are pieces that uh, help form either the card holder or the other tower. So fortunately, the pieces I'm punching out has not torn yet. I am seeing that some of these um, pieces that are behind are just starting to tear with how thin it was in the middle of it. So I'm hoping that doesn't mean any of these pieces will tear. So far, we're okay. Okay, not too bad. Okay. So as you can see, see that hanging piece that started to rip, started to rip the artwork on the back side. So I would say be careful when punching this one out. Um, there is a higher risk of tearing than what we've seen in some other games so far. Okay, uh, looks like some more pieces to the tower stuff we'll be making. Pretty nice, clean snap. See how easy that these are always the hardest to get out. See how clean that come out if it was a full punch. Okay, that was pretty clean. It only took a quick run of the nail. I didn't have to pull out a knife or anything to push through there. So that that's definitely nice. Uh, clean cut in the middle of that, fully cut through. But as you can see, the lamination of the artwork on these smaller pieces that are coming out um, are at risk of coming apart. So I, I would say be mindful of that as well, because that one just came out as three little pieces instead of because it delaminated itself as I punched that inside out. So definitely something to watch, be mindful of, and watch for. Uh, these bigger pieces are popping out pretty easily, though. It's the the at least it's the remnants that are having issues, and not the actual piece. If you pull it right, it seems to be okay. Cardboard's thick enough, but of course, anytime you uh, do double-sided printing and stuff, you can have issues with the lamination process. So we just keep an eye on it and comment on what we see. Let's see if I can pop that little piece out. This other one. Use the corner of this other one. There we go. I believe this uh, Luna Taxis is one of the player options, The that yellow taxi piece we looked at earlier. So you're the, the taxis. Uh, Double-sided print, but only one side has the actual character. The other side is uh, moon art, or the surface of the moon art. These pieces I'm currently punching are still additional tower type pieces. I really, I really like how they uh, designed a tower for all the, all the um, building tiles to set into instead of just stacking them on the table. 
it's one of the thing, uh, first things that jumped out at me. So then we have um, the space, uh, the Royal Space Cruise or the Space Royal Cruise. I'm gonna say it's the Royal Space Cruise. Uh, that was the pink uh, rocket character. I do like how the, uh, for these tower pieces the art is double sided. Now it looks like there's little robot workers on them. Okay, where's there? We go. That tab was starting to try to stick on me. And then the uh, what color? Kind of the the peach cream colored. Astro Burgers. Okay, so it's a burger joint, not a UFO shape. Astro Burgers. Interesting. A uh, character choice. I'm not sure I would have expected that, but have fun with it. You're going to need a place to eat if you're going to start living somewhere else. Okay, and then the last character option is the Moon Paradise real estate option. So you're selling real estate on the moon. Okay. Um, so the say diversity in this is okay. Could be better. Um, right now I'm currently seeing it appears to be one female. Um, and then and that female it appears to be the only person of, of color of any sort. Uh, so uh, they, they could have at least done one more female or whatever, but we'll see how the gameplay goes. I don't, I don't think it should be that big an issue. In this case, but I, I do know there's a, a bigger push for inclusivity and And when when you can easily add it in characters like that, and you're not, I don't know how much they tried or talked about it, but that is something to keep in mind. Okay, so we'll start punching all these other buildings, and see how they're they're labeled on the back. And there's C pieces. There's B and there's A, because it, they're actually it's uh, uh, divided into uh, certain rounds and using certain pieces in certain rounds. Uh, but these are snapping pretty good. I can probably get this snap on, Mike. So they snap pretty good. Uh, those, are, those tried to hang on me, but they didn't grab too too much. So I'll get finished snapping all these out real quick. Probably the most uh, punch board sheets I've seen in the game in a while. That's for sure. But granted, with how many tiles this game has, and it being a, a medium-sized box, it's not a huge box or a full 12 by 12. It's more like a, a 10 by 10 size box. So you're gonna have smaller punch boards, punch sheets than an average game. So of course you need more of them. I 
think we have time tonight. I can also go ahead and pull back those instructions on how to assemble uh, the towers. Yeah, so we, we got a pretty nice pile of punched sheets here. Let's see how thick that was. Well, one, two, three, four. So 16 total sheets to punch. That's definitely, I think, uh, the winner for number of sheets to punch so far that I've done this year. Um, yeah, I might. So these promo ones, well, it looks like the promo ones are based on essentially the uh, character choices. So you have the pink royal, the blue moon, Paradise, the Astral Burger, and the Yellow Taxis. Um, so I'll look up if these are even used in gameplay. I don't need to probably don't need to punch them right now. So let's find the assembly sheet and the components that go with it. Okay, so tower yeah, blue pieces okay so all the blue pieces put the, uh, so based on a quick glance it looks like those go point outwards I'll put the dark on the inside then you have this appears to slide down. Potentially up and over. There we go. And then, so push up into that one, and then the bottom is going to slide over, kind of snap in right there. And then we have a bottom. We have a rear. So I think this small, yeah, the small skinny one is going to go here. Oh. I don't know, maybe I got the little work backward and put the inside on the outside. Yeah, I'm going to turn it around. I get too far because all these other pieces are dark and they go towards the inside huh? no the picture does show it darker inside sorry I guess I had it right Overall, not too hard to assemble. It seems to be going together well. Uh, the tolerance for the pieces seems to be good. Uh, not too tight, not too loose. Okay, this seems to show. The... That one's going to come up here. This one. So this actually has a cut on it, so it makes it easier to grab the tile from the bottom as well. So that's going to go in here. That doesn't seem right. Seems way too long. Oh, that's why. 
But I didn't see it in this tall piece of the tower. There's actually a, a, a teeny punch out slit that I missed a while ago. Seeing. There we go. I was like, why is this piece not connecting? But that's why. Okay. And then I'm going to go into that slot I just made, into these other two slots on the side. Slide it across. And it shows this bottom one. Point it up like that. Which also points up into the back. Oh, that's, that's a nice design. That's cool. So this last piece that went in actually points up to a little notch and then holds the bottom of this end so it doesn't slide back out. That's smart. I do like that. So a nice little t uh, tower. Um, uh, kind of rocket shaped. Um, try to keep this family friendly in the way I comment about it because of course I'm sure someone will notice other shapes um, but yeah so interesting little tower and that's set up so let's see if we can show it off uh, these pieces or these buildings can set into it as such uh, after they're mixed and for the, uh, divided for the round. They stack into the tower all the way up and then you can grab from the top you can lift you have a way to catch to the bottom. That's a really smart design. Uh, I do really like that design from just engineering standpoint not necessarily just um, playability. Okay and then we're gonna make a card tower so we find the Luna Capital one we're going to find the two sides, have these get slotted up, slot up, got to get this long piece uh, to fit into these slots. And then there's a small front piece that snaps it up. And underneath to support. And now that's a place uh, cards can be set and drawn from. So, for example, the cards are here. Can be drawn from that. And a thumb hole as well. Again, great, great design choice. Okay, so now we're going to build. Uh, appears to be a tile sorting tray insert of sorts. So we're going to have our two bigger pieces, our tall ones at the back right here. And then of these, these two are going to go like this. slot and then these two go underneath lined up as so and as so Oh, okay. And then it says optionally this piece right here into the box because it says it fits right there. Optionally, you may fix this structure to the box using uh, glue. And then, of course, it says in different languages. And then it shows you how to sort everything. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to ABC. I'm going to sort all these pieces. ABC here. The tower shows it fits here. Uh, likely on its side as such. Um, it appears cards can fit here and also potentially underneath depending on the types of card and what cards you want to keep on that. I think it's showing 
in this right here cards like this and then it's showing these cards down here uh, not the best option for that placement but the cards can still fit in that it's gonna be my choice um, score pad can fit up here and then this piece could fit the top of that all these components three more bags so I could split up the player components it looks like these can go down here with the score pad I'm going to assume yep fits perfect right there and then I'll sort all my tiles A, B, and C real quick um, so as long as it's laid flat it stays organized it might be a little loose uh, depending on how these if these can come out or not so let's do some quick sorting of all this stuff I had a few other components that could probably go into a ziplock right now see all of these have a different letter on the back a B's and C's I try to quick sort these um, which because they're using different rounds this is probably something you'll end up doing at the end of every game after people have uh, uh, drafted these during, during gameplay so this a quick glance may be the most tedious part of the game uh, just quick sorting but if you get everyone playing to help out, it shouldn't be too hard to do. see their lettering and somewhat line them up now so it's easier to grab the stacks and put them into the box in a moment now based on what I've seen so far it's interesting inserts uh, but I, I am afraid that our shake test is likely to fail when I be over there Uh, because of the, how, how, how tall that is so we'll see how well it does I just won't throw it on its side too much until I figure out a solution maybe I get glue or I get talked about to see how well it helps makes sense for a, a tile drafting style game for it to be this many. I am glad it has at least some uh, style of uh, box insert to attempt to keep it sorted and of course the tower itself for gameplay was a, a nice bonus add-on to have found when I picked up the game. have fallen down because I'm not being as tedious
sorted now. Let's get them into their slots. So it showed it fitting into the slots as such. Decently full, so they may not slide as much as I thought. Oh, that may be perfectly full. This may be even better than I anticipated. Oh, that's nice. Okay. That's a good fit. Okay. That's looking on the bright side now. I'm surprised. I thought there was going to be um, extra space, even more so than there is. So now we're looking at, as long as it's not too tall to come pop out, we, um, I'll probably have some card slidage right here. Um, so probably putting those back into a, finding a Ziploc fill of the cards might be my plan, but then we got the board going on top of it too. This may turn out even better than I thought it would. I'm fit talk about engineered it's so like to get the tolerances this tight on something this consistently is not easy to do especially when uh, punching out or having them on punch board um, depending if they're using knife dies or uh, lasering these cuts over time some of that can be thrown off of tolerance so I do like the idea that they that they mentioned of potentially gluing that in that could work um, put that on top overall see how this board holds it I think I'm actually not as afraid to do that shake test now. So let's see what we got. So throw it on the floor, throw it in the trunk, whatever it may be. Stand outside. You know it's going to go on the shelf weird. Let's see what happens. Okay. Not a huge deal if that rolled out. Okay, that was really surprising. Like the cards popped up a little bit, but these don't go anywhere. This stuff does barely moves. That is so much better than I originally expected. That so well thought out, and the inserts match the art aesthetic. You can pull these out and use them. They're functional in multiple ways both in the box out of the box i'm excited to play this now um just from how that goes together is even more exciting than i anticipated i'm surprised that there's not more information about this game out there already but yeah that was luna capital it is from dever games a 36 minute game so it's ages eight and pl eight plus on the box it says two to four players but of course as we saw inside the box it has solo rules uh, solo on the back of the board 